Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report. Mitchell Renz here, ready to answer all y'all's questions. We did this show during our live video on Tuesday when we were live on YouTube and when we were live on Rumble. So if you see some outdated stuff, don't shoot the messenger. Let's go to the very first Super Chat coming in here from Los Banos Tire Shop. Waller won't be traded. I'll put money on it. I would probably double down on that as well. The Raiders wouldn't be smart to move on from Darren Waller, and he showed up for voluntary workouts, and the Raiders team is going to run a lot of two tight end sets. If you're showing up for voluntary workouts, I'm not worried about you sitting out. Shout out to Darren Waller for being a real one. Let's go to the next super coming in here from Cameron Sproul. Mitch, ever since the Ziegler and McDaniels hiring, we haven't heard much from Mark Davis. Will he be more hands-off this year? I hope so. Mark, you know, has been – Mark's had a good offseason this year, and I'll give him that. I wasn't crazy about the McDaniels hiring, and I don't think many people were. There was a few people, and I wasn't all that crazy about the Dave Ziegler hiring. But these guys have gone into this offseason and absolutely crush it, and I'll be the very first one to say that I've been very impressed by how much these two have worked together. And if you're Mark Davis, you shouldn't really be – that much into it because I think when you see a lot of these NFL franchises that struggle, their owner has got way too big of a head and he tries to control way too much. You're hiring these guys for a reason. They know more football than you do, Mark. So the fact that we haven't heard from them, I think that's a really good thing. Let's go to Zoe365. Shout out. Should the Raiders bring back Mo Hurst? Ah, dude. So I, I actually like that you asked me this because when I saw that Maurice Hurst was released by the San Francisco 49ers, I went ahead and I tweeted it out. Bring back Mo Hurst. When I look at a lot of the Raiders' defensive tackles that they have right now, I see good run stoppers. You need somebody that can get after the quarterback. Is Mo undersized? Yes, absolutely. But I was always a fan of Mo Hurst. So if the Raiders wanted to go ahead and bring him back, I would do it. I also know that there's a lot of people on social media that want the Raiders to bring back Darius Phylon. And I know Phylon's out there on Twitter. He's sending stuff out left and right. I thought what Phylon did last season, he was really good. But you have to remember, he ended the season on IR. He was literally carted off. He had a season-ending injury. I don't know if he's 100% healthy. I don't know if he's even going to be ready for week one. On top of that, the only seasons that he's ever been good have been in Gus Bradley defenses. You go back and you look at every other year, Darius Phylon and a not-Gus Bradley system, it hasn't been pretty whatsoever. So what are your thoughts here, y'all? Should the Raiders bring back Mo Hurst? I want you to go ahead and type that Y for yes or... You can go ahead and type your end for no. It obviously depends on contract. It obviously depends on his health because one of the reasons why the Michigan product fell so far in the draft, he was a first-round prospect, fell all the way down to round five because of that heart condition. Personally, I love what Mo brings to the table, and if he's healthy, I would welcome him more. I would more than happy be to bring him back to the silver and black. I, no, I couldn't think what I wanted to say. Let's go to Dick So. Is it Dick Solid Dixon? I always want to say Dick So Solid Dixon. But that, that just ain't it. Would you rather get a fart or draft a right tackle you like for the future? I, I saw an opportunity and I went for it. A free agent right tackle. Sam didn't like it. Grade the joke. Or draft a right tackle. If you're telling me right now I can get Daryl Williams, I'm going to go ahead and take Daryl Williams every single day of the week. He's the best right tackle available. The issue is this. You, with the draft, you just don't know, right? If Abraham Lucas slides down to pick 86... I actually like him more than I like Brandon Parker. If Daniel Falele is there, the right tackle for Minnesota, he's a good prospect. What about Tyler Smith, the kid from UT, or not UTSA, Tulsa? Another good right tackle prospect because Trevor Penning, he ain't falling around three. So if we can go out and get somebody like Daryl Williams, that's what you do because the Raiders' biggest need is still right tackle. I mean, that's the biggest need, it's right tackle. So I'd say Daryl Williams, make it happen, or hopefully one of those other players fall down, or maybe you trade up. Let's go to LC Raider, one of the OGs. Appreciate you, my dog. Mitch, I'm taking the Raiders at plus 3,500 to take it all. Do you have any future bets this year? Raiders! So it's funny. I actually put down a bet. This was, man, right after the Raiders. It was actually before the Raiders went ahead and they traded for Devontae Adams. I put down a bet on Derek Carr at plus 5,000 odds to win MVP because I said if the Raiders come out on top of the AFC West, that he has a realistic shot to go ahead and get it done. And then they went out and traded for Adams, and I could honestly say that if the Raiders win the AFC West, which right now is the best division in all football, 
Carr's probably going to be the front runner for MVP, so I like this ballsy bet, but I did get DC at plus 5,000, and that was before the Adams trade, so uh, <laughs> fingers crossed there. Keep you guys up to date, and on top of all that, this might surprise some of y'all, but I also make videos over on Chat Sports as well, and if you're looking for the best NFL draft coverage on YouTube, guys, Chat Sports is going to be live for the entire draft, all seven rounds, three days from April 28th, to the 30th if you like what you see here guess what we're gonna do the exact same thing over there and we also get the picks before you see them on television this might surprise you the internet's faster than what you see on tv so we'll not only get the picks first we also will get millions of watchers too it's a huge party it's a lot of fun so please go ahead and subscribe youtube.com slash chat sports tv and join me join the entire chat sports team because we're going to be rocking and rolling and they're long days but the days are a lot more fun and enjoyable when it's 42 hours of just nonstop NFL draft coverage. So please go ahead and subscribe. Let's go to David Taken. We need to trade up and get a right tackle. If, if your plan is to go into the season with Brandon Parker as your right tackle, I will 100% agree with you on this because I'm sorry, I don't trust Parker at right tackle. And you can have a great offense, right? You can have all these amazing pieces, you can have Devonta Adams, Darren Waller, Hunter Renfro, Josh Jacobs, Derek Carr. If you can't, if, if your offensive line can't block, it's not going to matter. And right now, when I look at the entire offensive line, the biggest weakness is still right tackle, and it's still the area where, when I watch a lot of film on Derek, yes, the blind side scares people, but when Derek sees pressure, he panics, and most quarterbacks panic under pressure. I wouldn't want a giant athlete running at me either, but I think it's one of the biggest reasons why you have to address that right tackle spot because you also need to be able to see what you have out of, out of Alex Leatherwood. That is if Alex Leatherwood is on the team this year. I know, it's a crazy rumor. Let's go to Cameron. I would trade up to get Woolen, then convert him to wide receiver. I love the creativity, and I, I'm going to be respectful and just say no because uh, Woolen is a good athlete. But a lot of his tape is he's actually not the best ball locator. So I would like a wide receiver who can locate the football. I get it. Six foot four, 205 pounds, runs a 4.2640. But if you're not a good pass catcher as a corner, then I don't think you're ever going to be able to play wide receiver in the National Football League. What up, Michael Avelli? Is Carson Strong an option for us in round three or four? I'm going to go ahead and say I hope not. I like Carson Strong as a prospect. If I was Carson Strong and I was his team, I would hopefully – get drafted by the New York Giants, go behind Daniel Jones, play with Brian Dable, because I thought Brian Dable did a lot of great work with Josh Allen, and Carson Strong is a lesser version than Allen to me. He's not nearly as mobile, but he has a big-time arm, and he's got a very strong arm. The only reason why I don't want the Raiders to do it is because they want to compete now. Like, you only have five picks this year, and the Raiders, want to, I want them to use that round three. I want them to use that round four pick and trying to find players that can help us win right now. Carson Strong is not going to help us win now, next year, and probably even two years from now. If you want more videos, yes, I said it, more Raiders Report videos. You got a question? Join us live. Remember, I go live every single Tuesday, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific. So hit that subscribe button. Turn on those notifications, and that way you can join me every single week, and that way you can get your Raiders fixed. I got you covered. We're the number one most watched Raiders show on YouTube for a reason. Let's go to Willie Raids. Trade Trayvon Mullen for a third, yes or no? Yes, in a heartbeat. Here's the issue. You're not getting a third-round pick for Trayvon Mullen. I know the Raiders drafted him in round two, number 40 overall. I would say right now if you could get a fourth-round pick, that would even surprise me. I would say an NFL team would more than like The Raiders would more likely trade him for a fifth. If a guy like James Bradbury is going for a fifth or maybe sixth, I get it. His contract's a lot different. But, yes, third-round pick in a, in a freaking heartbeat. Let's go to Christopher Leonard. Mitch! Mitch, is OBJ a possibility for wide receiver two? FAB, FTB, only the real ones know. Also, you're going to be in Scranton this summer. Let's get a beer. Scranton, no, Chris. However, I will be in the Poconos, which uh, I'm going to be. Fr it's I, I actually don't know how close it is. It's kind of close. What? No, the Poconos is in Pennsylvania, Sam. Uh, I'm going to be in the Poconos for my buddy's bachelor bachelor party. And that's going to be from June 2nd to June 5th. So if you're near the Poconos, June 2nd to June 5th, and you want to come grab a beer with me and some of my good friends, you know, as far as I'm concerned, the only, I'll say this. you got to buy the groom 
a beer. If, you, if you're willing to buy the groom some drinks, then you can come party with us because I know the group of guys and we're gonna we're gonna have a we're gonna have a good time. But OBJ is a possibility, sure, potentially. He actually still thinks the highest odds are for him to go to a team is still the Raiders. But uh, OBJ is another name that I don't see going anywhere until after June first. Let's go to Tyler Fireblade. Does the Raiders trading their first and second next year get us a first this year? Yes. I mean, so a lot of times the way that NFL teams look at the value of picks, if a 2023 first is the equivalent to a second round pick this year. So a first and a second round pick next year absolutely would be worth a first round pick this year. It's just, uh, I, I also don't know why the Raiders would do that. I, I actually personally wouldn't do it. But if you're watching this live, we got some crazy trade ideas coming up here in a little bit. Let's go to TikTok. Tiny man. Could the Raiders draft Marcus Jones in round three? Marcus Jones is another player that I've talked about numerous times on the show and also was a player that the Raiders met with. If your idea is to get Marcus Jones and put him as a corner, that's not a good idea. Like, Jones is 5'8", 170 pounds, corner out of uh, Houston. He's just an athletic specimen. If you take him in round three, you better use him as your Swiss Army knife. And it scares me because... The amount of times I've used that term on this show, whether that be Tanner Muse, Swiss Army Knife, that was a dull blade. Lynn Bowden Jr., Swiss Army Knife, that blade we didn't even get to see in Las Vegas. Like, Marcus, though, is a player where I think he has a lot higher upside as being a great special teamer and a player that you use on offense as a kind of like a Tavon Austin style of athlete. You use him that way because if you try to use him as a corner, you're going to be disappointed. Now, guys, we got a big-time announcement on Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern time, 2 p.m. Pacific. So if you guys want to come ahead and join my live show, please go ahead and do it. 5 p.m. Eastern time, 2 p.m. Pacific. I got a big old announcement that I want to share with the Raiders Report. With everyone who's watching, with all of our loyal subscribers, the link to the live show, in fact, it, the show's already scheduled. So if you're watching this, the show's already scheduled. So you can actually go ahead, click the Remind button. That way when I go live on Sunday during Easter, you're like, oh, yeah. I got the reminder. I'm going to come in. I'm going to join the show. A lot of big news. A lot of big news. That's all I'm going to say. Let's go to Christopher Leonard. Mitch, Mitch, do we pick up Jacobs after the year or no? So you're talking about his fifth-year option. You actually have to make that choice. I believe by May 2nd is the day. It's May 2nd or May 3rd, and I don't know why the days get confusing to me. But the, the dude who's most likely to get it is Jacobs. You're not going to do it with Furrow. You're not going to do it with Abram. If you do pick up Jacobs' fifth-year option, it's $8.5 million. Not that I don't love Josh Jacobs. I just don't believe in paying my running backs a lot of money when I see some of the talent that you can always bring in from the NFL draft. Jacobs is good. He's got a long injury history. I hope that the Raiders don't do it, but I also wouldn't be surprised if they did because he's a good running back. Let's go to straight music. you rather have Crabtree or Edwards? Brian Edwards, it's not even close. Like, I get it, and I'm a very, I'm very tough on Brian because I had high expectations for him, and Brian was an athletic guy, showed out in training camp. I actually got to watch Brian live, and I talked to some Raiders players who also practiced next to Edwards, and they're like, this guy's incredible. The hype was there. The issue was this. Brian needed another star receiver next to him, maybe even two or three, to be able to create separation and get open because once he was made a focal point in trying to stop, he wasn't good enough to get separation. Michael Crabtree, love him. He did a lot of good things. He's just washed up at this point, y'all. If you want more exclusive videos, who knows? Maybe I'll talk about old Raiders players that we could bring back into the silver and black. Might even see Donald Penn in there. We'll go ahead and do that over on Locals. But if you just want more questions, if I don't get to your question on a live show, I try not to answer so many on Instagram anymore because I want people to ask me questions on Local. So if you're like, wait a minute, Mitch, you're not answering my question on IG, it's because I want you to ask me over on Locals because I just get a lot over on IG. So if you haven't seen your question today, you can always DM me over on Locals, RaidersReport.Locals.com. Osiris Serrano. Osiris? I don't, I don't. Is that what it is? Osiris? We should take Crumb from Kent State in the seventh round. He has nice touch to his deep ball. So I know who you're talking about. Um. Uh, Here's the thing, guys. I don't want the Raiders to draft a quarterback, and that might be an unpopular opinion for some people, but I just don't want them to do it. You have Nick Mullins, and you have Garrett Gilbert. Neither of these quarterbacks are going to compete with Derek Carr, 
And I get it. It's a seventh round pick. What do you have to lose? I just would rather you go out and try to find other players at other needs because quarterback to me isn't a major need for this team. So you're going to take a fourth quarterback. What are you going to do? He's, he's more than likely not going to make the roster. I would say let's hype up Nick Mullins. Let's hype up Garrett Gilbert. And then if you want to move on from one of those guys, get some extra draft picks later on, then let's go ahead and do it. What up, Daniel? Mitch, Mitch, will Carr stick to what he said about buying Tay a car if he comes to the Raiders? Tay said he feels Ferrari-ish or downplay to Rolls-Royce. I'll know this, uh, Carr can afford it. So <laughs> I think if, if he wants a Ferrari, if he wants a Rolls-Royce, it wouldn't surprise me if he did it. I don't know if DC is going to do it, but I also know this. I wouldn't be surprised if Carr didn't or if maybe they were like, hey, I don't know if it's a good look considering the fact of everything that's happened in the past around some big time news and rumors here with the Raiders, but I'm, uh, I'm totally on board for it. Let's go to the next super. It's coming in here from Ivan. Is there a wide receiver in the draft better than Brian Edwards? I mean, how much time do you have? I could, I could probably name 10 receivers in the draft that I'd rather have over Brian Edwards, and that's not a knock on Edwards. It's just I saw this past season that Edwards isn't good enough to be a wide receiver one. I actually don't even think he's good enough to be a wide receiver two. I would put him in this wide receiver three category slash red zone option. So, yes, there's plenty of receivers that are better than Brian Edwards.